This is the 2019 Ford F-150 Raptor. Today we are with our friends at Chuck's Faith Ford in beautiful New Ulm, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a ride. ride. Say, if you want to keep up to date on all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know all the cool new vehicle technologies, and you'd like to hear some cool collector car stories, take a second to hit that subscribe button below and ring that bell notification so you never miss a video. So what do you say, Nathan? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. So, here we can give it a start. It is a push start. I like that Bill Ford tough screen. I like that. On the left, you have an analog RPM gauge, and then on the right, you have an analog speedometer. And then in the middle, you have this really, really nice um, LCD screen. The little window right here is interesting. It doesn't actually light up anything until you put it into gear and then you can see your 10 gears so it allows you even in in drive to see the uh the gear that you're in and if you put in manual you can of course paddle shift and it will show you of course it doesn't want to shift out a second because i'm not moving let's zoom in a minute let me refocus i do like the way that uh, ford has organized this so on the top you have got up here you have got all of your basic gauges. But then just below that, instead of making you go to a separate menu with a button to make these appear, Ford leaves these hanging out right in view. All these little tabs. And I think that's nice. I think it makes it easy to, to see what you can get to uh, without having to push a button to get that to pull up. You can also see here on the left, some little boxes. So it tells you how many little different views there are. All right, right now I have a gauge view, so I have engine oil temp and transmission oil temp showing. Um, but over here, bottom below that, you've got your odometer and then your gear selector along with your lane keep assist that you can uh, see there. And then right next to that, there's a picture of a little car. Well, uh, Ford gives you a little picture of a car depending on what driving mode you're in. So if I quickly shift... You can see the car change. Now I'm just going to go back to normal and see the car change again. And then next side there's a picture of a steering wheel because you can change the steering mode. And if you do that, the icon changes. So that's what that's down there before. And then you have a little compass. I want to show you just a minute what is in this information screen here. So there's this thing called my view and I'm using these four cursors plus the OK button. So if I just use the up and down buttons, I can scroll through the different screens that are available in my view. And if I go over, and one more over with my right arrow, then you can see things like uh, trip one, trip two, fuel economy, fuel history, auto start, stop, that kind of stuff. Okay, once you press okay on them, then you can go and scroll through those screens using the up and down arrows. And then if I go over one more, you've got truck info. So you've got gauge view, which I had on earlier, configure gauges, tire pressure, uh, speedometer, and engine information, okay? And I just click okay here. And if I toggle through, then I can see all these things. So basically what Ford has done is the, when you go to the first tab, it shows you what's available. And then if you just press the okay button, you can then use just the up down arrows to scroll through all those uh, pieces of information okay so they've made it really easy they've made it easy to access the menu and they've made it so that you don't have to um, go to separate sub menus to get there okay and then of course here is uh, some of your safety stuff like the the trailer blind spot which is really cool extends your blind spot so it back to your mirrors 
uh, back to your trailer. Uh, your pre-collision, your uh, cruise control, if you want, as to whether you want it adaptive or non-adaptive. Uh, this is empty calculation, lane keeping assist, and then some advanced settings. So that's uh, that's the basics of what's in that driver's information center. And really, again, Ford has done a really nice job on this Raptor of making that really easy to get to. All right. Now, backing up a little bit, you've got some steering controls. Right. On the left, you've got the cursor buttons and the OK button that control the driver's information center. Below that, on the left, you've got your cruise control buttons on, off, cancel, resume, set, and then, of course, increase or decrease your cruise control speed. And then right here, you have a button that you can increase or decrease the gap of your adaptive cruise control. So if that is set, you have cruise control on. You can see the mark as you all turn it off again, you'll see it reappear. There it is right there. And then you can decrease, uh, increase the gap, sorry, or decrease the gap. Okay, moving over to the right side of the steering wheel, you have uh, media controls. So you have volume up and down, left or right arrows to either scan right, scan left, uh, radio stations, uh, switch modes, um, or scan through modes. This has voice command navigation, so that button's right there. Down below here, you have a mute button. You have your steering mode selector. You have your phone on, phone off, and then your mode buttons for driving. All right, behind that, you, of course, have your paddle shifters, and the um, Raptor comes with big, heavy-duty metal ones. They, they, they feel really good in your hands. I, I really like those. They're just, they're really long. They come all the way through the bottom there. Coming back, you have got three buttons, or excuse me, you've got five buttons up here. This is your auto start stop button, which you can turn off. So I really like it. They've given you a physical button for that. This one turns your camera on or off and you can check out the different views we have. Got the 360 view, which is awesome. Over here are your hazards. This one here has to do with trail control. This turns trail control on or off. And basically trail control is gonna allow you to set your speed, uh, basically like a cruise control, and then allow you to um, you know, concentrate on, this, on the steering and the braking. But when you push it over, if you look at the dashboard, there it goes. Trail control enabled. Then you use the set buttons over here to increase or decrease the speed. And of course you need to be in drive to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. And then the last button over here is the traction control. All right, moving on down, I'm gonna go to the left a little bit because there's some really cool features down here. Um, this is your four wheel drive selector. Basically you have two high, four automatic, four high and four low and a locking rear differential right here. Now, uh, down here you've got the trailer brake control but this is the one I wanted to talk about for a second. Um, this comes with the Copilot 360, which this comes with, and it comes with the Assist Plus part of that package. And um, I believe it's called an 802A upgrade on the Raptor. So <laughs> if you're not good at backing up trailers, you, you I think you're really gonna like this. Um, so basically what you do, you have to make some markings on your trailer. You have to put in some measurements. But basically, when you're ready to back up with the trailer attached, you turn this knob instead of the wheel. And you turn it the direction you want the trailer to go. And then it automatically does what it needs to do with the real steering wheel to make the trailer go that direction. I think that's going to be a really neat feature. And I've not seen it on any other vehicle besides Ford's. So I, I really like that. I think it's a, a no, novel idea. All right, coming back up here, let's talk for a minute about the uh, the infotainment screen. Now, like I said, this is a Bang & Olufsen sound system. This has a Copilot 360 Assist Plus. So here's what you basically have on here. Up in here, I know this is a little hidden by this uh, yellow tag here, but this is your pass, driver and passenger temperatures. And I like it that Ford has stuck that right up there, so it's really easy to see. Time, of course, outside temperature. And then your home screen button. 
Okay, we have two pages of icons, and up here you've got sound, clock, Bluetooth, uh, phone, Sirius XM, navigation, mobile apps, and then the Ford Pass Connect. And if we swipe over, general, the 911 assist that can call. Uh, Rob mentioned that um, before, but if there's an accident, it can automatically dial 911 for you. Automatic updates, like most cars nowadays, you don't have to go to the dealership to upgrade your update your, your audio system. There's information on your vehicle, the display screen itself, voice control, and of course, valet mode. And we're gonna go first to the vehicle one. So I'm on the second page of apps. I'm gonna go to vehicle. And then down here, you've got just a couple of things. You've got uh, your door keypad code, which is something you probably wanna set. And that's where you would start that process. And then you have camera settings. And one of the things that you can do is uh, turn on or off the enhanced park aid. Okay, and there that, that little icon appears or disappears. And then the rear camera delay. And I don't know if anyone else uses this feature, but I sure like it. I'll leave that way when, after you're done backing up, you put the vehicle back in drive, it'll allow you to go about to a speed of five miles an hour before it shuts the back camera off. So it just gives you a little extra, extra time to see things behind you. All right, now in addition to the um, that, you have ambient lighting on this vehicle. Not a lot of settings on there, but you can uh, definitely control the brightness. All right, the other thing, other one I want to look at is just the general button. And this is where you can change things like language and the metric, uh, the measurement units and temperature units and so on. And, okay, about sync and your software license. And you can turn off the touchscreen beep. All right, down here, you've got audio. So if you wanna look at your sources, you can just go right up here and you can select your sources. This does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, you do have climate control buttons up here. Now, not all the buttons are on the screen here. If you press menu, you get a few additional buttons. All right. And then um, otherwise, there's pretty self-explanatory what's up there. Hey, okay. we're gonna go down to phone. This is where you would uh, add your phone and then you would uh, access the different features from there. This particular vehicle does with 802A upgrade does come with navigation and uh, it's a nice map, and you have, with the uh, Sirius XM stuff, you have some traffic overlay features and things like that. Okay, over here, you can get different settings. All right, and then of course, you can uh, add a device here, you can find mobile apps, or use the Sirius XM travel link, which is a really nice feature if you subscribe to uh, the, the full service for Sirius XM. Um, you get a lot of nice features with that. All right, and then, of course, the settings button brings you back to the screen that we were just on. All right, now, moving on down here, there are some physical controls for the media player. For instance, you have volume, which is just a rotary dial. I do like it that the numbers show up in the screen. I, 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 I know, I, I like graphics, and I think that's neat. Power button, of course, here, on, off. And then you have your media sources right here. And it just switches back and forth between them. And then, uh, of course, a cursor right or left to switch stations, uh, switch songs. And then, of course, the physical memory buttons. And then you do have a physical tune button if you're on the radio. You can just see that it automatically starts scrolling. Okay. I like it. You don't have to go to an extra button or an extra screen to do that. And it's just right there. Okay, moving down below, you have physical controls for your climate. Okay, so you, of course, this is a dual zone auto climate control. If you want on an auto, you can click it here. And of course, if you click it again, it doesn't shut off the auto, but if you hit the fan, and again, the numbers display on the screen, which I like, you can you can turn off the auto that way. And otherwise, you, you've got your, uh, the basic physical controls are your power on off, your defroster, your recirculatory system, max AC, regular AC, and then your mode setting, and then uh, the rear defroster. Okay, this does come with heated and cooled seats, and let me tell you, the cooled seats really work well. Now, it's only 66 degrees, but boy, did I feel it on the way over. Three-stage cooling and three-stage heating. All right, 
down below here, you have two USB ports along with a nice, uh, fairly deep storage tray, which I really like. Down here, you have your lane keeping assist button. So if I turn that on, you can see the guidelines go on and off around the adaptive cruise control. All right, now over here on the right, you have two different power sources. You have got a 12 volt outlet and then you have got a 110 volt, 400 watt max household outlet. You have an automatic dimming rear view mirror. All right, so up here, you have your dome light buttons here and here. You can turn all of the interior lights on with this button. This one will allow you to cancel the lights coming on when the doors are opened or allow them. So it's either, a, you know, so if I open my door right now, no lights. And if I hit the switch again, let that die out for a minute. I open my door and they come on. All right, this is your uh, panoramic sunroof, uh, open and close. This is your, this opens the shade for your panoramic sunroof. This closes it. And of course, we already talked about that one. And then back here, you have seven, uh, six auxiliary, auxiliary buttons that are already pre-wired for you. And you can see they're, they light up as they go. So you can attach up to six different auxiliary items. And then over here, you have your power sliding rear window. 